Welcome to lecture 41, creating methods. So I already mentioned that methods are just actions. They're just act or a bunch of code put together and the name is attached to it so that when you actually run that code, it runs all the code together under one name. And we've seen um, these actions or methods already like console.writeLine. WriteLine is an action. It actually is writing some text to the console window. But all the code that actually is doing the writing to the window is done behind the scenes. And it's a bunch of code. It's not just one line of code. There's a lot of code that, it, that is being used to actually write it to the screen. So all that code is wrapped around this name, write line, and we just say write line, and it will do all that code. So, so a method is basically an action. It does something. So I already talked about also that methods are good to use because they remove you they remove the need to have to duplicate code. For example, let's say we're writing a program that's calculating the average of, of maybe an array or something. We don't want to have to keep on writing that code every single time we want to calculate the average. Let's say we had to do it three times in the program. That means we have to write that set of code three separate times, which is it's not, it's not good because if you have to make a change to the code in one of these places, you have to change it in all three places. So by making a method, I can make a method that does the code for calculating the average in one centralized location. And any time I actually need to calculate the average, I'll just call that, that method. And but when I do that, it will use that same set of code over and over again. So let's say I, with the methods, I call it three times. If I need to make a change to the code, I can make it the change once inside the method. And now anyone who's actually using it gets updated automatically. So we'll see a lot of examples of how that works. But let's actually start with making our first method. Now, because we are dealing in with console applications, our main method, this is the main method I talked about previously. This is the main method where the code actually starts for your program. And if you notice that this method says the word static, and because it's a static, that means that any method that we create also has to be static in order to make it work here. So in this um, section, all our methods will be static, but I'm not going to explain what that means yet until we get to the next section where I'll explain what static means and then we won't actually be using static methods that much anymore. But for now, we'll, we'll just write static and just you have to assume that it's correct and eventually you'll learn what it, what it actually means. So let's go ahead and create our first method. Our first method is just going to do it. It's going to display a hello message. So we'll call it display hello message. And basically, it's just going to print to the console like hello, welcome to methods. So there is a couple of components that you need to actually know before you can create methods. The first component of creating a method is access modifiers. So there are two types of access modifiers right now that I'm going to explain. We'll, we'll see some more in the future, but two for now. It's public and private. So there's public and private. Those are two access modifiers. Public means that anyone can use it. That means anyone can use this method. So if we look at console again, and we say console.writeLine, this write line is public because I can use it and I didn't create it. So by making it public, anyone can access and use it. Now, private now means, on the other hand, private means that only the class itself can use it. So the class that it's created in can use it. For example, if I built a private function here inside of this class, you see these curly braces for class, that means I'm part of this class called program. If I make it private, that means that only the class itself can use it. So I can only use this method if it was private inside of program. Anyone else can't use it. Because for example, console is a class. And console.writeLine, this is a public method inside the class. That's what I can use it. But if it was private, I wouldn't be able to use it. Only the class itself could use it, meaning the, the code inside of the class could use it. But I, I couldn't. So that's the difference between public and private. Like I said, when we get to classes, we'll look at this all. The, we'll look at it a lot more by creating public and private variables and things like that inside of our classes. So we'll get to this a lot more. But that's the basics of public and private. 
So that's the, that's the first component of building a method, the public keyword or private, depending on whatever you want. So we're, we're going to say public for now. Then it's the return type. But before the return type, we need to add static. And like I said, we're just going to copy that for now. Until I explain static, do not worry about it. Just copy static for now. So public static. Then it's the return type. So the return type means basically when my method runs, any result that it has, maybe it's, maybe it's calculating the average. Then after you run the code, you want to actually give the user the average. So that's what you would put into the return type. The return type is the result of the method. Whatever the method does, this is the answer. In this case, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any answer because it's just displaying some text. So I'm gonna say void. Void means that there is no answer or no return type. It's not gonna return anything. It's just gonna do an action and that's it. So that's the, that's the second component. Now it's the name of the function or method. So I'm gonna call it display message. So the name of my method here is called display message. The next thing we need are its arguments or parameters. I'm going to explain the difference between arguments and parameters, but they are essentially the same thing. People do refer to them as the same thing. So these are parameters. To, e to enter your parameters, you put in open and close parentheses, and then inside of those go your parameters. Your parameters are basically any information your method needs in order to complete its task. So my display message um, function or method, it doesn't, in this case right now, it doesn't need any information. It doesn't need anything from the actual caller, whoever's using this. So I'm just gonna leave it empty, but we'll see an example where it, it does require something. Now that I have that, I make the body, just like how main has its body. Now any code that's inside of this is a part of this display message function or method. So let's say I wanted to do a simple message like hello world. This hello world code is now a part of display message. So let's say I wanted to now actually use this function and display that message. What I would do inside of main is I just call the function. So like I do console.write line, write line is the function. Do you see this symbol right here? That symbol means it's a function or a method, or it also means it performs some kind of action. So if, if I start typing display message, you can see I have that same symbol. Now that's saying that this is also a function. So I do display message, open, close parentheses, semicolon. The reason why it's open, close parentheses and no information inside of it is because I have no um, parameters. However, if I do console.write line, I put in the text here. This is a parameter or an argument in this case right now. The information in, inside of here is what the function needs in order to complete its task. So console.write line says, oh, you need to give me some information to complete my task in order. So if I want to print something, you need to give it to me. And you give it to me through the parameters. But display message does not require anything, so it's okay. So if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it says hello world. And what's happening is the code is starting in main. It sees this call to display message. It now jumps that code piece and runs the code in there, and then it jumps back where it left off, and it will continue on. You could basically think of this code right here is just copying this. Like it, it's just taking that and cutting it and pasting it right there basically but the benefit of doing it like this is that if you're using this function a lot of times you only have to make change it to it one time inside of this definition and then every place that you're actually using it is automatically updated okay so let's let's change this up a little bit and let's, let's add some arguments or parameters now so let's, let's build a function that adds two numbers together and then prints the result to the console. So I'm going to build a function. I'm going to say public static void because I don't want to return anything yet. I'm just printing to the console. That's why it's void. Add. And now I'm going to add two numbers together. So I need some information now. I need two integers. So I'm going to say int number one comma int number two. So by putting this 
these two parameters of integer in there, it's saying that if you want to use this function called add, you only can use it if you supply me two integers. If you give me two integers, then I'll let you use this function. And then what my function is going to do is going to add them together. So I'm going to say int answer equals number one plus number two. And then I'm going to actually just print it to the console by saying console.writeLine answer. So now that I, if I want to use this, I'm going to say add. But now watch, when I put that parenthesis in, it says, okay, you need a number one and a number two. If I try to go like that and don't give it any information, look, it gives me an error. And it, it basically, the error is saying that you need to give me information. Anything inside the parentheses are information that the function requires. So it's saying it requires two integers. So I need to supply it two integers. So I'm going to say 5, 10, because 5 and 10 are both integers. So now it's happy. I put in a 5, and then when, that, when you put in that 5, it gets passed into number 1. When I put in that 10, it gets passed into number 2. It's all based off of order. So this comma separates the first and second. So the first one in here goes to the first there, and the first one in there goes to the, first, the, second, the second one in there. So they get linked that way. And then it runs this code, 5 plus 10, answer will be 15, and then it will print 15. So let's see. So add, and then 15. So as you can see, if I wanted to now print another number, like 10 or 50 plus 100, I can just type that and run the code, and now it will print the answer to that. But with the other method, I would have to, if without functions or methods, I would have to actually manually write this code over again. I have to say, okay, number 50 plus number two, then console.write line again. So there would be two separate console.write line statements. But by using methods, there's only one set of code, and then they both use this code over and over again. And then that allows me, if I make any changes in here, it will affect both of them. I don't have to go in and manually change every segment of code. Okay, so, so far so good. The only last thing we haven't seen yet with the basic intro to methods is that we haven't seen anything with a return type besides void. And void means that it returns nothing. And the reason why this is returning nothing is because it actually is just printing to the console right now. That's all it's doing. However, this could be a problem. The reason why it could be a problem is because what if the user who's actually calling 5 plus 10 wanted to do something with the answer? What if they wanted to take that number and then do something else with it and maybe add that to something else? In this situation, the, the user who's calling add never gets to know what the actual answer is. It just prints to the console. It never gives them the opportunity to do something that they want with it. So the way we solve that is by using a return type. So in this situation, I want to return the answer back to the user. So I don't actually want to print it out here because maybe the user doesn't want it to be printed. What if they just want to add two numbers together and just get that answer and use it for something else, like I said. So they don't necessarily want it to always be printed to the console. So I'm going to give them the opportunity to do whatever they want with it. So I'm going to return it. So basically, I'm going to be returning an integer because a number plus another number, two ints plus each other, R is another integer, so I'm going to send that integer back. So I'm going to change the return type into an integer. Now it's saying that this add function returns an integer. So instead of pressing, um, I mean, instead of printing the answer, I'm going to return it instead. And the way I do that is I type in return, and then I return whatever I want to return. In this case, I want to, I want to return the answer. So return answer. Now, instead of the, the method itself printing it, it gives the user the opportunity to actually do something with it. Now, notice how if I put my mouse over the add call in main, it says int program.add int number one, int number two. So we know number one, number two, that those are its parameters, and that's basically the information that's required for the function to actually complete its job. But that integer now, that first int, that's the return type. So it's saying add returns an integer. So it, it basically means add is an integer because this function right here returns an integer. You can basically treat it as an integer. Let's remove this for a second. So let's say I want to actually get the answer from this. I can just set it equal to it. I can say int answer equals add 5 comma 10. 
The reason why this works is because this add 5 comma 10 is actually returning an integer. So it goes and gets the number, whatever it is, and then it stores that into answer. If this is void, I'm going to get an error here. Let me comment that out. Notice how this is, doesn't work anymore because if I highlight it, it said that this is void. And a void does not return anything. So it's not giving anything back. So you can't assign an answer to nothing. The, the only reason why we can do that assignment is because it returns an integer. And an integer can be equal to another integer. So what happens is add 5 comma 10, it goes, gets that answer, and stores it into this variable. So then now the user can do whatever they want with it. I can now take this answer and use it for something else. Or I can just print it myself in here instead. I can say answer in here. And now you'll see it also says that 15. So that 15 is getting calculated in this function over here. It gets sent back and I store it into my own variable and then I do whatever I want with it. I could also use that for another thing. So I can take that answer and say, okay, int second answer equals add answer plus five. So I, I instead of printing it, I took that answer. Oops answer comma five they'll add them together I took that answer and I use it in another equation and then I'll get a second answer and then maybe I'll print that one I'll print the second answer so we can see now the answer is 20 it took the first 5 plus 10 and then added 5 to so that I got 20 so it this by returning the number back to the user it gives the user the control of what they want to do with the number or whatever the function does it allows the more control of the user rather than the rather than the, the function itself just doing all the work without without even asking to use what they want to do. And we've actually used return types all, the, all along. If you look at the function int.parse, look, parse says it returns an integer. See, int is the first thing. That means that it returns an integer. And we used to see something like this. We, we did um, int maybe a equals int.parse console.readline and basically this reads from the console so the int.parse function takes in a string inside of its parameters so this is the parameters for the int.parse which is basically this so it takes in that string it does some kind of stuff and then it returns an integer because int.parse returns an integer and that allows me to do this int assignment because it returns an integer. It's the same exact thing as this. It parse, it takes in a string, it does whatever it does that converts the string to the number inside of its function. It, it has code itself that it's doing the conversions and then it returns a number that gets stored into this by its return type. So to show you that it actually takes in a string, like I can peek the definition of this parse function. I can go peek definition, and it's going to show me the kind of the code structure of where it's coming from. Now, it's a, this is a struct. Don't worry about that. It's called in32 is the real name of it. But you can see it has the, this parse function. And you can see this is, the, this is the definition of the function. It's public, static. The return type is integer. The name is parse, and it takes in a string called s they called it in this case so there's basically the same exact definition that, that we did we're basically defining functions just like this except their function does separate code it's actually the code is used to convert numbers i mean convert strings into numbers but the general idea behind return types and parameters are the same you can't because parse requires a string i can't call int.parse without giving it a string watch if i just try to go int.parse nothing it's going to give me an error because it says you need to give it something. It says error. No overload for method parts, parse takes zero arguments. It's saying there's no function of parse that takes in nothing. You have to give me something. You have to give me a string so I can say test, you know, any type of string. Now it's happy again because I gave it its string that it wanted. Okay, so this was the first look at creating methods. The next um, lecture is on passing by reference and passing by value. And that's basically just how we send information into a function by its parameters. There's different ways to actually send it in, and we're going to start looking at it in the next lecture.